All right, I'm going to ruffle a few feathers here, and we're going to talk about some of these women bowling releases. It's been a big topic for me uh, over the last couple of weeks because I've been doing release and accuracy uh, training clinics at the Waterford Lanes here where our bowling center or our pro shop is. Um, and this was one of the things we actually used as an example as to teaching why uh, you may not have a powerful release or a higher rev rate. Uh, a lot of the women are a prime example as to what it is. So uh, I'm going to go through this with you. We're going to talk about what a lot of women or weaker hand, lower rev rate type people actually do. And this isn't anything against women. I think they were just taught wrong. And a lot of women have this mentality of, I'm just not strong enough. Really, this is technique. It does take a little bit of strength, but not a lot. It really doesn't, because there's some really small people. Some smaller women have, you know, pretty good rev rates and whatnot. And we're going to talk about all this stuff here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to take a look at some of the releases here. I'm going to try to pause on some of these so you can see them. But let me back up to the beginning here. Watch these first ones. Now, this isn't to say that these releases are bad. These girls, they, these women, they have some great ball roll. They understand what to do with their hand as far as creating good ball roll, which is why a lot of them are very successful, especially when they're tougher. And maybe it's just a product of their environment, um, which is why a lot of these women have the same characteristics. I'm really not sure. Um, but I do know their hands could be in a much stronger position. And I'm going to try to show you some... Uh, similar characteristics here and then get to the the meat and potatoes of the rest of them of the actual strong hand positions so we take a look here first thing we want to notice is the wrist guard okay but look at where the hand is if i draw a straight line across that ball in the equator hard to see with my little play button there but if you draw a straight line across the equator of the ball where's her hand it's on the top side Look at her left shoulder. Her left shoulder is behind her. The right shoulder goes forward. This is a very common thing for women. I'm not sure why, but it is something I think that's been taught by a lot of college coaches. The swim move, throwing that left shoulder back while throwing the right shoulder forward. Maybe it's a ball speed thing. I'm not sure, um, but it's an incorrect technique, in my opinion, to be doing these types of things. But when you watch her ball roll, her ball roll is fantastic. Her hand is still technically kind of up the back, and she's rolling it forward. Quite a bit of side rotation, but the ball roll is still really nice. But the unfortunate thing is, is because of where her hand is at the top of the ball, it's not going to read soon enough, and you're not going to get that ball to um, read the middle of the lane when you go left. So this is why they get trapped playing the right part of the lane. Now this one was a little bit better. Let me back that up there. This one is a little bit better. You can see she's a little bit lower on the ball, still on the top side. And again, shoulder, left shoulder's back while the right shoulder's going forward, which is what makes you have no choice but for your fingers to go to the top side of the ball. When your shoulder goes forward, it makes it very difficult to stay underneath the ball. So this is where a lot of the side rotation comes from. Her thumb, you can see, is already pretty much cleared. She's just got the tip of her thumb in. At this point, the thumb should be basically cleared, or at least where there's no pressure on the thumb, and now all the pressure's on the fingers, and you're just rotating through with your fingers. That's what creates rev rate. The quicker you can make that transition from the thumb to the fingers, and the faster you can make the movement with your fingers, the faster your rev rate's going to be. A lot of other techniques can go into this with the bent elbow and things of that sort, but for just beginner's sake, that little bit of quickness with the thumb and the fingers is what makes all the difference in the world. But you can see, again, her ball roll's pretty good. Quite a bit around the side of it, but she is playing the lanes a little bit further left than the last person was. She wants it to push, and it does. It's high flush. It looks pretty good. But again, that ball's not going to read the middle of the lane very well. Let's see where... See, that now this is a super extreme example. Let me see, can I back that up just a little bit? Yeah, right here. She's really on top of the ball, and Deandra's always been on top of the ball like this, but this is um, very, very, to very much top spin. Very much so, very high tilt. She doesn't quite get her hand underneath the ball. Let's look at the shoulder. 
Yeah, see, again, her, her, her left shoulder is behind her already. Very common thing for women. And this is one of those things that I really try to teach against, is having that left shoulder back behind you as you're releasing, because it makes it very difficult to have your hand on the back side of the ball and underneath the ball. We want to think of the ball, our fingers dragging on the floor as we're letting go of the ball. When that ball is, when our fingers are dragging, that means we can be underneath the ball as much as possible. And then we also want our fingers to the inside part of the ball. Now because of her high tilt, she actually gets forced to play a little bit further left than most because her ball skids so far and is so high reactive. Now this is another one, Missy. I'm not gonna be able to see her shoulders. But you can definitely see how far off the side of the ball and on top of the ball she already is. And again, maybe it's just product of their environment. Maybe they just bowl on a lot of really, a lot of their patterns hook a lot, maybe. Maybe that's what it is, and so they have to use weaker releases. I don't know, but it always seems like that's where they go. They get these weaker releases. And I'm not saying weak ball roll. Most of their ball rolls are really nice. They get it going in the right direction, and they get it rolling in the proper direction. But their hand is just not in a strong spot. And again, look at the shoulder. Look at the left shoulder here. Flailing back already, which makes her arm and her hand. See, she's trying to keep her elbow to the inside, but her hand won't let her. Her hand, because of the shoulder, has to go to the outside and to the top. So she gets to the top. Again, good ball roll though. She still rolls it forward nice, but she's losing a lot of leverage and power because of her position, because of where her hand is. So, but otherwise, really good ball roll. If I could teach a lot of these ladies ball rolls, I would. But I'm trying to get people to be more underneath the ball. Let's see here. This is Daria. She's a little better. Look at that. She's closer, and that's why she's a little bit more strong, a little bit more powerful. See the thumb clear? This is a very good example. Thumb clears. Fingers roll through the side. That's why she has a little bit higher rev rate than a lot of the girls on tour. And look at where her fingers are. She's a lot closer to the equator. Again, still on top, but a lot closer to the equator. So she's more powerful than most of the girls that are bowling out there, which is why she's winning a lot more, in my opinion. I'm not saying power is everything. I'm saying these things are very important for creating room for error, for creating carry, having better carry position. Like, why do you think Belmo gets all those hits that he gets? It's not because he's that much better, which he is that much better. But I'm saying it helps to have that much power. Another one, she stayed behind it really nice. She's a little bit lower. But that thumb, I don't think that thumb cleared quite as fast. Let me see here, where's she at? Thumb, then fingers. That's pretty good, but it could be earlier. But look how forward... See how far ahead of her foot that ball is by the time her thumb's actually cleared? That needs to be behind her a little bit more. Then she can really create some leverage and power. Again, look at that left shoulder. Left shoulder's back, so it forces her hand to go forward. Just keep this in mind. I know, I'll give a couple more examples here, and then we'll be good. Shannon, a left side, left side view. She stays behind it really good because of... You know, being left-handed, she kind of has no choice, for the most part. But again, she's still at the top side of the ball. Left shoulder back, or right shoulder back, causes a few issues. But she's And she hasn't done very well lately, for some reason. Maybe left side's not been great for her. I don't know. Who we got here? Jackie Carbonetto. We can't really see that one too well. But again, looks like her hands to the top side. Thumb is clearing, then the fingers. That's the whole purpose. Thumb, then fingers. If those fingers are below further instead of on the top, how much pressure can you put there and actually roll that forward with your fingers only in the ball till there? If your fingers were behind it more, underneath it more, you can create a lot more power, a lot more leverage and, and forward roll. Still good ball roll, though. Kelly Kulik, generally... Yep, she's one that does it more proper. Oh, my chicken's done. She does it more proper. See how close she is to the equator? She's almost right on the equator. Hands to the behind the ball. And that's why she's always been much better at playing the inside part of the lane than a lot of the ladies. So she does it really well. So, with that being said, let me get this 
opened up here, you can see what these ladies do compared to what we want to do. Now, if I were to go back, let me actually, I'll pull something up and see if I can't pull up some men and we'll take a look at them as well. All right, here we go. So now we got some men, starting with Belmo, of course, the most powerful. When you watch, you see how far underneath the ball his fingers are. Now it's a little bit easier not having a thumb in there, of course, but it's still a prime example of what to do with your fingers. Unless you're two-handed, you're not going to get your hand really that far under the ball. Pretty difficult to do, but that's where his advantage comes in. He's able to really create a lot of leverage and a lot of power with that type of release. You got Tommy Jones. This is another pretty good example here. Move this out of the way. You can see his fingers below the equator. And then as we move forward, he rolls right through the back. Fingers released. He's another. He, he's, he actually gets his shoulder back before the release, too. But he's apparently just super strong and can get, uh, get the ball to do the right thing, get his fingers in the right spot anyway. Who we got here? Dick Allen. Another one. He's right at the equator. Well, a little bit below the equator there as he rotates through. Thumb, then fingers. Not bad. But he's at a he's he's one of the you know mid-range to lower rev rate guys on tour at, in this day and age. And then as we move forward, who we got here? Simonelli. This is a good example for the left side. You can see how far underneath the equator his hand is. Rolling right through that back of the ball. A little bit of side rotation. And he's actually curving it for a lefty right now, playing, you know, 23 at the arrows for a left-hander. That's pretty incredible. This is one of the best in the game. As far as I'm concerned, it's with this, where his hand goes, you see how far inside his fingers get, and then how behind and underneath the ball he is and then he just snaps it off and rolls his fingers through you can see the quickness of the thumb to the fingers goes up a little bit with it but that's okay that's still a really good example of what we're looking for Sanders yeah, he's a little too high on the ball but again he's he's a twirly type lefty he gets it to twirl around the lane a little bit which I think he's uh, which is what get, gravitates him towards a purple hammer a little bit more, too, because it allows that ball to read the fronts better. Uh, who's this? I'm not sure who that is. Here's EJ. Another really good extreme example. Fingers to the inside. Hand way below the equator thumb way out of it, then rolls his fingers through it, and does it super fast, very quick. Chris Vi, another one, look at how low he gets his hand underneath the ball at release point. Another advantage of two-handed bowling, he's getting that low below. Let's take a look at Brad Miller. Another one below the equator, not as low as some of the others, but still very, very low. And then rolling through the back side of the ball, very nice. Very good, nice and powerful, real strong. Another two-handed Jesper. Another one that, I mean, he's almost on the front side of the ball. His fingers are so wrapped behind it. That's why he's got 600 revs. I'll watch his fingers just rip through it. It's amazing. That's incredible. All right, we're going to call that good right there because that's Bill O'Neill again. So as you can see, that is the men and the difference that what they do. Now, a lot of the women are going to say, well, I'm not strong enough to get underneath the ball like that. It really, you're only underneath the ball for a fraction of a second. It's just getting your body in the right position to get yourself underneath the ball. The technique is now to get make sure that your foot is stopped then the ball comes through because as your foot stops you're able to tuck underneath the ball and go through the lane that way so we're going to take more look at this technique uh, in some of my advanced classes and some of my release classes i think i'm going to create a, a virtual class on the release on teaching this and doing the right things uh, eventually here real soon so be on the lookout for that that's all i got for you i just want to talk about the release uh, as far as creating leverage and power with your hand 
um, and what the women do versus what the women, what the men do, or I should say what the weaker hand positions do compared to the stronger hand positions. And it's not just a woman thing. Um, so I'm going to get out of here. Uh, and until next time, I will see you guys later. Take care.